Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in New York. On Wednesday, June 29th in Greece, the Greek parliament passed a series of austerity measures as thousands of people outside the parliament buildings protested ex against exactly that. Wall Street Journal was rather happy, saying that the investors around the globe thought this was a good short-term fix. But was there any choice for the Greek people other than accepting these austerity measures and was defaulting as bad for the Greek people as their prime minister said it would be. Now joining us to talk about all of this is David Harvey. David is a distinguished professor at City University of New York, director of the Center for Place, Culture and Politics, and author of numerous books, including Sorry, The Enigma of Capital and the Crisis of Capitalism. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right, so did the Greek people have any choices here? Uh, yeah, I think they did. Um, I think they should have defaulted. Um, simple as that, and they should have done it earlier rather than later. Uh, what would have I, been the consequences if I, they had? Well, the consequences are going to be awful whichever way you look at it. What they're doing right now is awful. There's going to be no economic growth in Greece for about the next 10, 15 years. The standard of living is going to decline. Uh, and at the end of that, they're still going to have to default. So the only question is when they're going to have to default. Okay, so the contrary argument is uh, they don't default, they're able to get loans because they have more loans and because the government gets out of the way uh, there's now more capital freed up for investment and so on and so on so what's wrong with they've, all that? Well, and got, growth and growth they, will emerge they've got more loans but uh, on the other hand uh, the standard of living is going down the, the, the demand is going down uh, the jobs are disappearing and, and uh, you know, entrepreneurial people are leaving the country in droves so, you know, the, the, the future of Greece is very, very dismal the way, the way things are right now. As is the same case in Ireland where, you know, they've been through this and, and they haven't revived growth at all. So you're not going to get any revival of growth. And, I, and I, actually, I don't think the real question is what can the Greeks do. The real question is why is it that Europe is not actually responding in a much more responsible kind of way? When it comes to this issue of demand which means yeah. higher wages so people can actually buy stuff, which right. in theory grows the economy. Mm -hmm. When you look at the document that came out of the Toronto G20, it seemed that the uh, leaders of the, of the world understood that when it came to China. Yes. There they said, oh, there should be higher wages. Oh, yes. there there should be more social yes. safety net. Oh, there you should increase demand. Well, if they, if they understand it for China, how can they not understand that if you do this in Greece, you aren't... How are, how are you ever going to be in a situation because, to really pay because, off debt? Because you're, what's going on in, both in Europe and in the United States is a political project, not an economic necessity. And the political project is about feathering the nests of the very, very rich at the expense of the very poor. The Republican Party in this country has done this, for, in this country has done it several times before. You run up the debt and then say, savage all the social programs. That's what Reagan did. That's what Bush has done. And, and, and what do we see? Tremendous increases in inequality. So it's a class project to actually gain more and more class power for the very ultra-rich at the expense of the mass of the people. I can kind of understand it if I was a multi-billionaire <coughs> in the United States. I can kind of understand the logic because even if there's not much demand here and the economy continues to have you know, real rates of 18 to 20 percent unemployment, I'm still making enough money here, and boy, I, can I ever make money elsewhere in the yes. world right now, yes. so who really cares what happens here anyway? Right. But if I'm a European banker or politician, do I really want such a, 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 I hate to use the word, but to turn Greece into a complete basket case economically? Well, but that seems to be what they're doing. Gre yes, but, but actually, since the euro was introduced, the amount of German trade with Greece has shot up, and, and essentially... German industry has destroyed all, all Greek industry over the last you know, 15 years, that sort of period. The great German export story. Yes. And, and of course, Germany is doing very well right now, partly, again, it's exporting to China, and China's doing what you're saying, it's growing. So there you have a situation where Germany is doing okay. Now, what would be a responsible uh, uh, thing to do on the part of the Germans would be to do what the United States did to Germany when it defaulted after World War II. I mean, basically, the United States bailed Germany out, free. And N not, not with demands for massive austerity No, measures. no, not at all, not at all. Exactly the opposite, in fact. And it actually built German growth. What the Germans should do is the same as the United States did to them way back then. And actually, a very interesting article just came out in Der Spiegel pointing this out, that actually the country that's defaulted more times in the last century than any other is Germany. 
and each time they got bailed out. And, and particularly when, uh, with, with, with the U.S. bailout in, after World War II. Now, we, we interviewed a progressive uh, uh, Greek uh, economist, and, and he, he was saying that there's a section of the Greek left which was not in favor of default, that even yes. though they thought this whole thing was terrible and they didn't agree with the, the austerity measures as presented, that default would be so destructive to the Greek people that you couldn't default. There was just well, too much suffering. Well, it's a downward comes. spiral, downward spiral. You know. But they, they must know this. Well, they do, but, but it's a downward spiral for the economy, but it's an upward spiral for the very rich. I, I don't know if you've seen the data recently in, in this last recession. Uh, over the last two or three years, the rich have improved their position. In Greece? Uh, well, certainly here. Well, uh, throughout the whole world, actually. And, and in Greece, of course, the very rich people are in Europe. have got all their money out in Europe anyway. They haven't got it in Greece anymore. So they're, they're doing fine. So from, from the point of view of the Germans and the German bankers and the European politicians, what's their long-term vision of Greece? I mean, to have this kind of uh, important country within Europe, not one of the biggest economies, but yeah. still an important right. country, to, to go into such deep recession for a decade, which seems to be the only possibility here, yeah. They seem okay with that. They, is it partly just they won't let a country default and get away with it? They have to just kind of prove to everyone you can't get away with not paying off your debt. Well, the big, the big uh, holders of Greek debt are the French and, and the German banks. And so if the Greeks did default, then those are the ones, they, those banks may well go under. And then the, Greek, then the German government and the French government would have to bail out their banks. So you can see the game that's being played here. You rescue the banks all of the time and then you know, let the people... Okay. Yeah. Another big issue is with attempts to set fire to the headquarters yeah. of the finance. Yeah, so there's no question that uh, the, the, the upper, upper classes have not been paying taxes. Uh, and, in and, and, and in the austerity measures that has been forced on Greece, how much of those measures includes you better collect taxes from the rich? I haven't heard too much. I, no, you don't, you don't hear too much, but it's the same, you know, uh, almost everywhere you go. You don't hear too much at all about, you know, what's going to be done to the very affluent and the very rich and those who can afford it. And of course, in Greece, it's very difficult to catch them because, uh, like I say, most of their money is in Europe anyway, and who, who knows uh, exactly where they've got it, so it's very hard to track them down. So it's just, a, you know, it's the civil servants and it's the pension funds and, and, and uh, unionized employees who are going to lose uh, all, all of their assets. And, and then the other ac accusation or charge is that the, uh, Greek, the Greek people, especially unionized workers, that their pensions and, and their, the age of which they retire and, and things like that are simply more than yeah. the country can afford. Well, th those are the kinds of stories that get told around in Europe. Uh, if you start to compare country by country, it varies a lot. They're, they're, they're not markedly you know, better than, say, the French. Uh, uh, and so the counter-argument would be that yeah. France is more productive, it can afford it, yes. and the Greeks can't. Yes, but th again, uh, the German system is quite, is, is, quite, is quite generous, and particularly over unemployment uh, benefits and so on, very, very, very generous. How, how much does this push by Europe on Greece have to do with the, you know, the elites of Europe telling their own working classes, you are not going to defy these austerity measures, and look what happens to the Greeks, and don't think we're going to give in to you, whether it's in London, Paris, or somewhere else. Oh, absolutely. I think that's you know, very much what it's about. I mean, it's also true in, in the United States as well, that uh, it's disciplining labor, disciplining particularly the public sector employees. You see the strike on in London, uh, and, uh, you know, and we've seen what happened in Madison, Wisconsin. This is almost a universal strategy of the right wing, right the way across Europe and right across North America. Yeah, we saw days. this is at the Toronto G20. Yeah. This was ascending a glo on the global yes. stage because all the leaders were yes. there. Canada gets to say, well, here's what we'll do when protesters don't like, don't like these policies. Absolutely. Well, I guess rationality is not something we're seeing no. anywhere in the no. globe when it comes to these no. kinds of questions. Right. No. Thanks for joining us. Okay. Thank you for joining us on the Real News Network.